This is Andy Shavers with Acuity, and today we're looking at placing text on a non-planar surface where we want to keep the tool normal to that part surface. In a minute here, we'll go through placing some text on this cylinder and then machining it. But before we do so, let's review the other two text machining commands or engraving commands that are in NX. Under Create Operation, if I choose Mel Planar, the easiest one is here. It's just a planar text, which allows you to pro project a text note down onto a planar surface. Then if we look at Mel Contour, there's a, a second command here, Contour Text, which allows you to project a text element down onto a non-planar surface. But of course, you'll still have a um, non-rotating tool axis, you'll just be coming down from the from the z-axis to machine that. Okay, so it, we do need to do something more complex then if we're going to keep our tool normal to that surface. Uh, but here is the element that you're going to use if you're using either the planar or the contour text. You're going to create a, a note and project that note. We need to do something different here though. We need to actually wrap our text onto this surface. So I'm going to start here at the Curve tab and choose the text command that we see here. First I'll say, well, I want to place this text on a face, and I've got a face here. And next you see that I've already created a curve to guide that text. It's this arc that's right here. And what the command does then is tries to center the text it's given on that line. So if I reverse the direction, it just flips the text around. So this first setting was correct. Now I'll change my text. And that looks okay, but let's uh, kind of tip that and look in from the edge. And you see that the text is not actually wrapped onto the cylinder. The text letters are planar. They're just placed on the cylinder. Here's what I must do. This is very important, but I need to choose Project Curves. And when I do that, then you see it actually projects the text elements down onto the surface. All right, we'll click OK. And uh, to make things a little easier to see, I'm going to hide my solid for now, and I'll hide the arc. Our next steps are in manufacturing. Now it's time to go to uh, the multi-axis operations and we'll choose variable contour. I'll change the drive method to curve point. And it's important to select the curves correctly. I could actually draw a big fence and select all these curves right now. It would cause problems because the command would try and connect all of the curves. It would not pick up the tool. So for instance, in going from this point to this point, it would just drag straight across and, and gouge the part. The best way to break these into separate regions, I think, is to change the option here to connected curves and select them one at a time. So I can either um, add new set using this button. What I'm going to do is use the middle mouse button to accept. So left to click and, and then middle to accept. That allows me to move through these pretty fast. All right. Next, let's look at our options that are set by default. The projection vector is along the tool axis, and the tool axis is normal to the part, which has already been selected. So that should work out for us. Let's hit Generate. And we see we uh, are machining the text. The uh, non-cutting moves are not correct, but we'll fix that in a minute. Another thing we noticed is that we're not actually cutting anything. The ball end mill is just right there on the surface, um, just kind of tracing the part. 
So let's go into cutting parameters and stock and we'll put in negative five thousandths. Now when we generate, you see that it, uh, repaint, you see it has now placed the toolpath just slightly below our text. At this point, we should be able to run a verification and see the result of machining this text with the small ball end mill. So there's our result that looks correct. I'm going to bring back our solid and let's fix that problem as our last step. We'll fix the problem with the non-cutting moves. You see we were set to bounding box. That's what was creating our problem. So here's our cylinder axis. And we'll set it to a maybe a two inch radius. Then we can look at uh, say between regions that's already set to clearance and we can do the same thing here for are within regions if we need to. Okay, so when we regenerate, we see a better result now. Uh, we've got nice clearance moves up above the part. There is a, a final aspect that's probably worth mentioning. I took the defaults for the engage and retract, and you can see it's putting a little arc move in there. In some cases, that may create a little divot that would be unacceptable to you. If that is your situation, you're going to want to go to non-cutting moves. And for your engage, then you're going to want to probably just make that uh, linear normal to part so that uh, both your engage and your retract will go straight in. And then you won't get that little uh, lead-in move, which you might see as an artifact on your finished part. So that's our quick overview then of uh, creating text when we want the tool axis to be normal in a multi-axis mode. Thank you.